Here we are deducing the empirical formula of a binary ionic compound from its name. So we are doing just what we were doing in the last topic, but in reverse. Our name here is lithium bromide. Lithium bromide. So what is the empirical formula? Well, the first thing we need to do is write out our cations and anions. We know that this is an ionic compound, so we will have a cation and an anion, or, or multiple of each. Lithium is our metal. This will be our cation. Lithium is a group 1A metal. It is an invariant metal, so its cation would be positive 1. Bromide is the ion of bromine. Bromine is a group 7A uh, element. It's a, a halogen. And the halogens typically form ions with a minus 1 charge. So now that we have this, we can do exactly what we did in the previous topic. We can use the crisscross method or my cation and anion to figure out what these subscripts would be in the empirical formula. Li1, Br1, which simplifies to LiBr. Now again, we know that compounds, these ionic compounds are neutral, so the charge of our cation and anion must be canceled out to result in a neutral compound. If the charge of this, each one of these is plus one, and I only have one of them, and if the charge of each one of these is minus one, and I only have one, then this is a neutral compound, and that's how I know I'm on the right track. So that's my empirical formula. Now let's look at the second one. The second one's a bit different. We are told we have iron, and if I look at the periodic table, iron is not an invariant metal. It's not a metal in group 1A, nor is it a metal in group 2A, nor is it aluminum 3+. plus. It is what we call a variant metal. Iron can have various oxidation states. It can form an ion, for example, with a charge of 2+, plus or an ion with a charge of 3+. plus. How do I know the state of this iron metal ion? It's given to us. This is called the stock system. The stock system uses Roman numerals to indicate the charge of the cation. Let's take a look at our guide for naming these variant metal compounds using the stock system. So we see what they did here. They Name the metal as written on the periodic table, but they included the metal's ionic charge in parentheses. So this tells me that I've got an iron uh, metal ion, Fe, and the charge of it is 2+. plus. How do I know it's 2+, plus? well, iron is a metal. Metals are going to form cations. That's how I know it's 2+, plus and not 2-. minus. And I know it's a charge of 2 because of the stock system, Roman numeral 2. The anion is sulfide, which is from sulfur. And if I look at the periodic table, uh, sulfur is in group 6A. So the halogens form anions with a charge of minus 1. The elements in group 6A form anions with a charge of minus 2. So now that I have this, Let's use the crisscross method to determine the subscripts of the empirical formula, Fe2, S2. I can't leave it like this because empirical formula is the simplified ratio of the cation and anion to each other. So this simplifies to FeS. I can divide both of these subscripts by 2. And so FeS would be my empirical formula for iron 2 sulfide. 